Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning for some of you. And I hope you are doing well. My, my name is Hussein Jardali. I'm the Chief Customer Officer at Afro Legal, and I'm a Professor of Management and Organizational Behavior as well. Uh, today, it's a very interesting topic we're going to discuss. It's a, it's a topic related to governance, to management, to agile practices within the legal environment, whether it is in law firms or in in-house legal departments. It's a, it's, a, it's a very important question if you, if you come to think about it because uh, uh, the, the way operations should be done in these entities, these two big entities, law firms and in-house legal departments is a very crucial topic these days. And lawyers these days are basically taking a lot of other sciences, right? Management, communication. They do have some, some already some predefined, you know, uh, paradigms that are there, but lawyers these days are using a lot of best practices from tech from one side and from management from the other side. This is why our topic today is basically about agility. What should an agile modern lawyer know be to be really able to manage his law firm, to increase the profitability of his law firm? One, and whether it was an in-house counsel, how to enhance the performance of uh, 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 his unit within the corporation. So without any further ado, uh, let, let me welcome everyone to the session. Thank you very much for attending this beautiful, you know, uh, uh, discussion about, uh, 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 it's, it's like one step back, taking one step back in the way we are managing our day-to-day -day operations. How are we managing the that? How are we changing our organizations from the inside? If you are a lawyer, then you need to know this. If you are a manager, then you also need to basically uh, 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 know some best practices in this field. Let's hit the, you know, uh, let's start, let's kick off this, this beautiful session. I hope you'll like it at the end. And I'm, I'm just gonna turn off my, you know, cam. I'm gonna share my screen with you, but with you. And let's start. So uh, I'm gonna run this uh, now. Perfect. I, I think you can see my screen. And uh, let, let, me, let me introduce you to myself again. My name is, uh, my name is Hussein Al-Jardali. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a PhD holder. I'm also a, uh, I'm also the chief customer officer at Afro Legal. Our job at Afro Legal is basically want an easy way to uh, uh, to describe what do we do? We just listen to our client. We, we really uh, understand what they need. We focus on their needs and tr translate them into uh, uh, solutions in an effort. Uh, I do have some publications that you can, of course, uh, read and uh, enjoy. It's related to performance. It's related to humans. It's related to communication and so on and so forth. I also help big organizations corporations and big law firms and medium-sized law firms to really establish their uh, uh, strategy and transformation initiatives. Let's start with this, you know, uh, 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 presentation today. It's basically, it's gonna tackle the, the current planning situation in our organizations, what's happening now. What do I suggest, right? And, and this is based on references that I'm gonna show you at the end of this session. All our, uh, you know, uh, the whole story behind this 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 uh, webinar it's going to be you know referenced and i'm going to show you the books that i've been reading a lot uh, to to have this the planning system uh, who will do what and when and we're going to introduce the kanban methodology just to, to to let you know how to use this agile approach in your day-to-day -day operation so, uh, 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 without further ado, if, if we go now, if we just uh, uh, take a, take an overview look of you know 
what is happening in, in, in organizations now? We, 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 we found that some of them are disconnected, right? Operations are disconnected. Data is not used, data is not used as it should. Strategy might not be meaningful. Maybe we'd have some, you know, medium-sized law firms that, that lack some strategy uh, reformulation. Poor communication, it's one of, the, one of the main issues that were initially highlighted during the COVID-19 crisis, during the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Lack of decisive leadership. This is, this is something that I'm, I'm constantly seeing in, in, in housing departments and in law firms. Leaders are not being decisive of what they want, what they need. Resistance to change. It's, it's the holy, it's, it's, it's basically the mother of all sins, you know? <laughs> Resistance to change. Uh, lawyers, we, we are continuously seeing in our interventions that some, not, not everyone, some uh, lawyers or some loafers are having this problem with the, with the, with the users, with the, with the practitioners. Uh, 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 it's, a, it's a very important point to, to, to notice at this, at this moment. Goals remain ambiguous. The leadership, because it's not decisive, it's not able, oh, it's not able to uh, 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 group and align their goals with their strategy, right? This disconnection is a very, uh, uh, is a very big issue when it comes to strategy and leadership. So if, if we take all of these problems, we know that, there's, that, that there are some issues, that, that there are some issues when it comes to managing, you know, operations in law firms and in house security departments. And I think every one of you or everyone who's attending today might, might, might they, they know that there's something from one of these in the list, it's happening on their premises. So uh, uh, this is, this is the, 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 the statu quo uh, uh, right now. Now, why do some strategies fail? So we know that there's an issue with the strategy. We start thinking about the strategy, leadership. They start, they start saying, we need to do this, we need to implement this, we need to do this, and they, they start taking actions, right? But, but most of the time, these actions are disconnected. And when these actions are disconnected, strategy becomes obsolete. Strategy makers do not check if it's doable or not. They want to do it. They want to implement a legal tax software. They want to... They want to uh, increase uh, lawyers' performance, uh, utilization rate. They want to increase the number of cases done by, uh, you know, or number of contracts uh, uh, achieved in one month or in one week by in-house corporate lawyers. They want to do that, right? But they, they don't check whether it's doable or not. This is number one. Don't be surprised. Some C-suits executives do not know what the strategy is. Maybe this is gonna. Maybe this one is gonna trigger a lot of the attendees today, or a lot of people who's gonna watch this this session. I know people who do not know how to formulate a strategy, and they are immersive with their, within their day-to-day -day tasks. Right? They are task achievers, not not strategists. While while their role is basically to be a strategy, to be, to have one strategy at at at, at this law firm. Low agreement on what the right measurement should be and how they are linked to the objectives. You know, how to measure our strategy if it's working or not. This is also a big question. This is also a very important question that people uh, 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 making the strategy, they need to know how to measure their performance. And, and low accountability might be a reason. Uh, applying the numbers to the right indicators is also a mismatch between you now creating the, the right KPIs to measure the performance of the law firm or the in-house legal department. We do have we do have another session about how to create your KPIs and and uh, your measurement within your environment, right? And then and then a big question comes: so strategy measurement, strategy measurement. You need data, right? You need clean operation to have this really nice connection between what do you want to do, right? How do you want to do it? And the measurement that will tell you you're, you're reaching your goals, you're reaching your strategy. So this is the, the, the reasons why some strategies are failing. 
the, some of the challenges as well uh, uh, are, are uh, uh, you know, that requires non-business as usual decision-making. What I mean by non-business as usual decision-making, it means it needs a higher level of decision-making. It means a higher level of, you know, taking this step back and evaluating what is happening at the, at the you know, at the premise of your organization. And, and this is pure management now. Sometimes regulation, they affect what is happening. Business models are changing. Businesses are becoming more reliant on technology. I give you an example. Take the example of the financial technology or the, the financial landscape. The FinTech, you know, the FinTech breakthrough uh, uh, have definitely changed how people react to, or how people deal with, fin with, with, with financial institution. So, the thing's gonna be the same when it comes to lawyers later on. And when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, using tools to minimize the dependency on uh, uh, the, the human lawyer. AI is there, right? Chat GPT is there. So some of us, some of people, they might do due diligence now using some AI tool. You never know. What I'm saying is these changes, they require non-business as usual decisions. And for you to be able to take these kind of decision, you need to, to have this one step back and to put all the variables on the table and then start thinking about how should we draw the new puzzle? How should we, you know, put, uh, 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 finalize the new puzzle, right? We need to have answers. So uh, force majeure uh, are, cha are, are changing contracting relationships uh, and, and so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna, uh, 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 wastes a lot of time on this, but just the objective of this slide is just to tell you that sometimes you need to take non-business as, as usual decisions. You need you need to, to get out from the comfort zone of doing daily decisions to the place where you should really take strategic long-term decisions. Moving forward, we, we, we do have some barriers to performance. Let's say a, a law firm. And I'm seeing this, law firms, we have this manager or operation manager who is very enthusiastic to have everything in place, right? He likes organizations, he, like, he likes uh, 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 things to be done nicely, smoothly, and you know, with, with low friction when it comes to operations, invoicing, billing, uh, 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 monitoring the performance, showing the indicator, he knows that a legal tech tool that it must it, it must be a need for his you know to advance in his uh, uh, in his field in his in his geographical uh, area as well. Now, because because simply because clients are asking for quicker feedback, faster feedback, faster results, faster consulting, faster contracts, they are asking for their services to be done in a very nice way, and they need to have the visibility and they request to have visibility over their legal uh, uh, legal requests. Whether it was an in-house or uh, in law firms, it's the same, clients are clients, whether they are business units or even random companies or uh, uh, individuals. So the barriers of performance in this case, they become, for example, less scalability coming from assembling numbers, not analyzing them, right? And this is the paperwork that everybody is doing now, or the Excel sheets that everybody is using extensively these days. Now, it's a big question. It's a very important question. How to minimize the dependency on these kind of, uh, uh, you know, the tools that are important in one way. They are very important, but they are not enough. They are not enough. Someone should take the decision to say, I'm not gonna use them anymore, right? Specific reports might not be sent to the right person. Very important point. Who should see what and when? Who should see what and when? Who should measure the utilization rate? Who should measure uh, the performance of the legal department? Uh, when this report, how, how's the frequency of this report should be sent? Monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, and so on and so forth. Different interpretation is of, of the plans. We, we discussed this in, in, in a previous uh, uh, in a previous uh, uh, slide. Static dashboards. Static dashboard is one barrier to performance. Why? 
you need these dashboards. The dashboard that you have, or the, the, the dashboard, imagine that you're driving a car with a dashboard giving you information of the last or the previous day. Is it suitable? It's not suitable. This is static dashboard. Dashboard is like the same dashboard of the car, but giving you information about the previous ride, not the, not the current one. You need dashboard that are dynamic. You need reports that are dynamic. Some tools that are being used now, it gives you static dashboards, but they are not enough. They are not enough. Uh, uh, we, need, we need dynamic dashboards. You need a tool that gives you a dynamic dashboard and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, the right people do not have access to the right information. This is why as well, in legal tech, uh, uh, there's a very good emphasis on who should see what and when, right? Uh, who should see, who, who gives the authority or the permission to do this and this, to, to, to have this information at this time, at this moment, at this level, and so on and so forth. The SLAs, I, I, I explained that the SLAs are very, uh, this is something that, that pressuring the operations of law firms and uh, in-house legal department. Everybody wants his job done based on a certain criteria, based on a certain criteria. Anyway, these are the common barriers to performance. Uh, and another level, we do have some, one, one of the solution is basically to manage your operation in a project management perspective. And when I say project management perspective, I'm simplifying this process as the following. We have the project, a case, a matter, a contract, consider it as a project. We do the kickoff meeting with the, with, the, with the client, for example, you scope the project, you plan the project, you execute the project plan, and you monitor the progress of the project. Let's assume it's a litigation case. It's gonna be a project. Let's assume it's a big contract that has multiple levels of executions, right? Uh, 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 let's say that this is also a, 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 an important litigation case and so on and so forth. So uh, 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 you need to understand that project management steps are very simplified. I just simplified them here for your own uh, perusal project. Then you have the kickoff meeting with the client, the scoping of the project, what it needs, how much, when it's possible or estimated to be finished, planning the project, executing the plan, and basically by the way, when, when we say executing the plan, that doesn't mean we do have a static plan. We might have a dynamic plan that might change according to some type of you know, regulation change or some information that can, came out to the, to the litigation case and it might impact its uh, success rate or, you know, uh, and of course, monitoring the project from looking to a dashboard. As simple as that. You need to understand how for example, the number of time entries that were recorded on this on this case, the number of uh, the amount of resources that have been spent that has been spent on this case, uh, 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 how should we minimize this, increase this? So this this uh, 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 common understanding of how to use dashboards is a very important point in in uh, 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 managing your day-to-day -day operation in a law firm or in an in-house legal department. So what I'm saying is a modern lawyer, as, as to sum up, needs to have project management, project management skills, project management skills. Now, uh, to add to this, other than the project management skills, you need to understand that project management by its own, it's good, but you need to start thinking about uh, uh, eliminating, you know, the barriers rather than uh, 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 cleaning the pathway, right? Uh, uh, so wh why should these barriers that we've been talking about eliminated? Because basically I want to I wanna be a better operation manager. I want to enhance my operation. I want to reduce the risk of losing my clients. Losing a client is a very, churning clients is a very big issue in, in, lo in low firms and in, in, in any type of company. Churn is the big question now. Why, 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 why might a client leave me to another law firm? Because he's not getting the service that he needs, maybe. Because he's not getting the visibility over his matters. This is why 
most legal tech software are now creating an app for legal, of course, the client portal. Just to let the client know that whenever we are doing something on your case, just go and see the updates on, on your case. And you have, you have timely and in real time uh, communication between the law firm or the system at the client portal from, from the other side. This is how you increase your competitive advantage. This is how you let people and big corporation knows that when, when, when they want to approach you for a business, uh, for a business deal or for, a, you know, uh, for an assignment, they know they are addressing the right people and the, the right time, right? So now, now this is where we move to the, to the other side, the beautiful side of the things, the connected planning. I've read a book about this. It's called the connected planning. I'm, I'm going to share my reference at the end. It's called the connected planning, connected planning. That, so it's, it's basically telling everyone in law firms or in the house legal departments that in order to have connected plannings, you need to have the people, organization, process, data, business function, plan types, and the, the right technology in one place. So you do have seven elements to really have something called connected planning, right? Now it all makes sense because I, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying something new, but putting them in one in one place it's it's what what is interesting for me: people and technology, people and organization, people and processes, people and da data, people and business functions, and so on and so forth. I started with people because it's the main it's the main pain point that you need to tackle before doing anything. They are the people. You can get the tech that you want. You can pay for the tech that you want, but you cannot. You 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 cannot change a lot if the people around the legal tech won't be using this this technology. So connected planning is the answer. This is number one. This is the first answer. One of the things as well is basically how to facilitate connected planning. It's very important. It's a big question in law firms. It's a very important question in in-house legal departments. How to streamline the activities of a lawyer, of a partner, of an in-house legal department counsel, how to streamline their efforts with the organizational efforts. So this, this, particular, this particular particularity is very important when it comes to talking about connected planning, okay? Now, we talk about project management, the, the, the other level is basically agile project management. This is the next level of project management. It's being agile. Agile, it, it means basically uh, to, to uh, uh, it's used to reduce, to reduce the risk of failures and the risk of losing considerable amount of, amounts of investment. Think about it like this. Think about it like this. Think about the, the regular project management as a very rigid way of doing things. While agile project management is one as another more you know less sophisticated, more people oriented, more uh, 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 more result oriented uh, way of management, right? This is this is how I, I how I picture both both type of project management. Being agile is basically someone who can you know uh, 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 it's uh, agile. It, it means more more. Uh, uh, trendy, more healthy, more uh, it, 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 an agile manager. It, he has a lot of you know uh, uh, techniques to 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 pass through problems, right? So while while regular project management, it might be more uh, static than an agile project management perspective. So it reduces the risk of failure, right? Because we are. Continue, continuously evaluating whether what we are doing is the right thing to do or not. And we're not waiting until, uh, until the end of the project to change. We are changing constantly. We are evaluating the plan constantly. Because we know that when, whenever we do that, we will eventually, we will eventually solve the problem, we will solve the litigation, we will solve the contract, we will solve, you know, the matter and so on and so forth. So basically, when I say, when I say uh, agile project management, I mean a very healthy uh, project manager, that's it, who, who knows how to deal with 
unexpected changes to the project plan to the project plan so basically some fundamentals let's let's discuss some fundamentals that you need you can check them by the way i'm, I'm gonna read them explain them and you can check them do you have good people interaction if yes do you have business involvement throughout the process agile means also reduce reduce time to market what do you mean reduce time to market it, it might not uh, basically it might not basically uh, make sense to a law firm but it may it makes sense if you are if you are offering a new service to the market right or you are tackling another practice area for example let's say you are into litigation and now you're going to start with your uh, uh, venture in ips and intellectual properties the question is how agile are you uh, 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 putting this this new product or new service i'm going to sell service the, the the time to market how how much are you very how, how are you efficient into marketing this new venture this new service early deliveries and quick wins look how beautiful this 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 it's it's a tech related but when you say agile we always refer to the tech, tech people tech people who are working in development are very agile they are adopting agile in in their day day-to-day -day work why not why not and i'm just asking why not a lawyer with his all his beautiful knowledge all his beautiful mind you know he's a they have a beautiful mind lawyers why not adding this extension of agility why not adding this extension of agile management small enhancement flexibility uh, uh, uh to change focus to remain ahead of this game users and customers need at the heart of, of the decision making are you making decisions that really uh, doing good for your clients are you making sure that your clients are receiving what they need in the right way a, a, a good a good relationship with your client is, is is a very important one i work in customer success and i know and i know for sure that one of the things that i need to avoid is basically to really uh, 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 really let someone be annoyed from a feature from a solution from I, I i really need to keep everybody happy it's, it's not easy job it's not an easy job i know that but your clients and law firms they need to be happy they need to be satisfied right you cannot do that by 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 ignoring their needs by not being agile by not being re, i'm gonna say proactive not reactive proactive right shipping the product shipping the service whatever you want to call it it's everything at the end of the day, law firms exist for one reason. At the end of the day, in-house legal departments, they exist for one reason, right? For objectives related either to finish or to finalize, you know, uh, uh, or to, to achieve success when it comes to litigation cases and, uh, you know, and, and, and good advice and so on and so forth. Everybody now is afraid from a bad advice, right? If you, if you if you take the example of SVP now, uh, 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 I recently been reading a a report that says the audit firm that they, they audited the bank and they said everything was good, right? Everything was safe, everything was uh, uh, clean in terms of audit and so on and so forth. And then we saw the the bank trembling, right, in the in the, in the financial sector. What I'm saying is. Uh, uh, shipping the product is everything. Shipping the product, shipping the service, delivering to your clients and to your business units is everything, right? This is how to keep everyone uh, uh, linked, attached to what you're doing. Moreover, so I'm, I'm just gonna say uh, uh, a couple of words about the word agile. Word agile is basically it's basically it was created in the in the in the, in the technology field and the development field. They have a manifesto for agile, right? And uh, uh, but, but I'm not going to read the manifesto because it's very uh, uh, very linked to development, very linked to uh, 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 very technical. So I'm, I'm just going to change the perspective, right? If if I, I translate it, if you want this this manifesto to uh, uh, to to fit law firms and and in-house legal departments. So uh, uh, one thing is agile processes harness change. For the customer's competitive advantage this is one deliver projects by iteration what i mean by iteration in the, in the case of law firms and 
you know, in how the departments is basically telling everyone what's happening at each stage of the process, telling everyone what's happening there. Build project around motivated individuals. The people that are working on the litigation cases and the matters and the contracts, they need to be motivated. Use powerful face-to-face -face meeting to convey information. Lawyers should meet on a daily basis, right? Or on a weekly basis to discuss what should we do with these kind of problems. Litigation cases are not the same. You have $1 billion uh, litigation case and you have like $10,000 litigation case. Uh, they are not the same. Uh, simplicity is, is a key. Simplicity is a key when it comes to managing. I'm not saying simplicity in litigation cases. I know it's a very complex job. It's a very complex, you know, uh, environment there. I know that. But the management of the stream of, of litigation cases and, 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 and corporate matter, it should be easy, simple, right? The last one, and this is the one of the best one that, that I, can, I can tell you about, is basically at the regular intervals, the team reflects on how to become more effective, then tunes and adjusts its behavior accordingly. Imagine, imagine having, you know, monthly meeting between senior partners or partners, associates, right? Together on a single table, having the dashboard behind them and just discussing how, how can we be better? Imagine this meeting, the importance of this meeting. I do these regular meetings with, with, with the CEO, with my CEO. I do these regular meetings with, with, the, with the product uh, uh, owners in the company. I do they, uh, these, these, these meetings with my students. How could, we be, how, how could we be better of what we're doing? It's a, it's a very important perspective on how really to go further. Sometimes you'll be surprised that maybe, maybe an associate or an assistant they might have something in mind that, that gives you a lot of perspective. I recently, I recently got, because I do like face-to-face -face meetings, it's very important. I recently got a feedback from someone that completely changed the way I'm managing a stream. It's, it's, it's amazing of how much important meetings should be, not technical meetings, I'm saying, not, you know, the regular meetings, the regular meetings that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. No, no, I'm, I'm saying these very important, maybe on a cup of coffee, I don't know, right? Maybe on a cup of coffee, maybe on, uh, on lunch, just take feedback from people who are working with you in the organization and you will be surprised, you will be surprised from their perspectives on how to change. Again, this is, this is how I think about uh, communication, but believe me, uh, this is one way to do things. Uh, uh, reflect on how you do your operations. Reflect on how you do your operation. This is the key of making it better. So uh, the dinosaurs, <laughs> the chain. I, 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 <laughs> whenever I reach the slide, I, I, it's fun, you know. Uh, uh, so, so look, look at look at the picture. It, it's it's basically people people asking, do you think he's open to change? How much? How many times do you ask the questions whenever you want to implement something new in your in your company? How much is it difficult to change people? How much is it really? Uh, 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 you know, time consuming to convince the wrong people with the right tool, right? So this is a big game changer. You need to put everyone in the same boat and tell them, guys, we need to, we need to, to, to solve our day-to-day -day operation in a very agile way. We take baby steps. Look at the word. I use baby steps, right? Because again, I, I, I'm using this with, with, with the development team in my company. We, we said, if we want to change something, let's start with the baby steps and then we can take the major steps. It's good. Baby steps are not scary. Small steps, they are not scary, but they are very effective. Small steps, they are not scary for those who do not like change, and but they are effective to achieve change at the end of the day. Now, uh, 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 and, and remember that agile is change, right? If you want to be agile, you need to change. So uh, 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 
When it comes to better operating environment, I mean clear role and responsibilities. This is why when the first meeting with the law firm or with the South Legal Department, I asked who's who's in charge of what? Who's in charge of what? And maybe this should be shuffled or not. This is this is one of the things that we do. Uh, in Afro Legal is basically to advise, right? Uh, uh, the operation team and 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 if they want, of course, to 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 give them some best practices, the role, responsibilities. Empowerment to take decisions, power in union, high energy and positive vibe, better results. Now, these, these are, I, I, I'm sure you heard about lots of these, you know, parts, but again, they are part of what is called agile project management. This is what it's part to be part of an agile team, right? So, uh, but, but, but another question pops up. Is, is it being agile means that all our problems are solved? <laughs> so no, it, it's, it's not like that. It, it could be abused, right? The, the method could be abused to, to do something wrong, right? Uh, uh, you need to onboard everyone about the method. You need uh, uh, people who accept this change, right? Adopt characteristics that are best matched with agile. So. Uh, uh, is it is it a, is a, being agile is suited for le legal teams and uh, uh, law firms? Yes, I can say yes. Why? Because I'm seeing this. I'm seeing both of them. The the, the agile team, right? The ones the, the the law firms who takes very you know uh, uh, big steps to change something, and, and it's top down, right? It, it, it's a start from the managing partner until it reaches the, you know, the assistant. It starts from there. And I, I'm, I'm really seeing people who are making a lot of difference, especially in the Middle East and in Europe, right? So agile is suited for in-house legal departments and law firms. How to prepare to be agile? So define the vision, of course. We said, we, we talked about the strategy at the beginning of this session. Define the vision, define the business value. What are we trying to do? What are we trying to offer our clients? There must be always something different between a law firm and another law firm. So build the project team, break down the project, provide estimates, risk and expectation management, communicate frequently what is happening on, on the level of this on the level of this project. These are, you know, the seven steps that you should basically adopt whenever you say, I wanna be more agile when it comes to management. Now, one of the things, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm always, I'm, al I'm, I'm almost done. I have like a couple of slides now. This is, uh, I've been talking 40 minutes now. Uh, 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 one, of, one of the tools that you can use basically as a law firm or as an in-house legal department is, Kanban boards. Kanban boards are an agile project management uh, uh, tool that uh, uh, it's like a billboard, right? Where you can, for example, let's say you are managing your tasks, right? Let's say you have 10 litigation cases on, a, on the level of each litigation case, you have assigned five tasks. So five times 10, this is 50 tasks. tasks. First question is how to have visibility over these 50 tasks for maybe 10 lawyers, right? How to have visibility over this? Should I write them on my paper and pen? I still use my the paper and pen method. No, it's not gonna happen. You need to vis visualize what is happening and when and why it's late and why it should be, you know, expedited and so on and so forth. So, uh, uh, the Kanban board is very easy, right? It, you, you, we do have it, of course, in Afro Legal. I'm, I'm, I'm a big advocate for Kanban boards. I always say to uh, managers, don't just go to grids. Don't use the grids. Go to the, the matter board. Check your matters. Where are they now? What's the progress on the level of each on each uh, matter? How to expedite certain uh, matters that are that are late. So, uh, of course, there's a universal, there's there's a universal uh, 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 best practice basically to use open and progress pending, closed, 
you know, uh, invoice, not invoice. So uh, you define the headers of the Kanban and then the tickets or the, you know, uh, these ones, these are the, either the matters or the tasks that you are working on. And that, that, then you, they will move according to their status and their, uh, how much uh, uh, of them was, was done or not. So it works like this. You need to visualize the workflow. Workflow. You need to check because this is the predefined. You predefine the workflow. What is the workflow of a litigation case? What it it, it depends on on your practice. What is uh, uh, what is the workflow of uh, a corporate matter? What is the workflow of a contract? So define the workflow, visualize it, limit the work in progress. Limit the work in progress. You don't want to put a lot of things in the work in progress. You always need to keep it clean and simple. Manage the flow of the work and basically follow up with people, right? Communicating with the right people if they are late, if they, if they need to add something to this task. Make the process explicit, not implicit. Everybody should have or should understand how things are done and how things are followed up. And of course, improve collaborations collaboration with with the whole team in a, in a very nice and easy way and again this is all done because you are visualizing in one screen all of the things that are happening on the level of this matter and these tasks you need to have a backlog and by backlog i mean to do items right it's very easy what should be done what should be done this is why the project management he he's the one he's a person that you know, that, that can basically identify what are the backlog of a certain case, of a certain uh, uh, contract, uh, of a certain matter, and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, the, size of, the size of this backlog, it shouldn't be too much big because it's gonna be harder and harder to manage it. You need to minimize uh, uh, the, 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 the size of the backlog as much as you can, as much as you can. Now again, because you do have some backlog and do you have some work in progress, uh, 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 ideally it should be it should be it, any process should or any progress should be from open to closed or done. This is where you start seeing results. This is where you start, you know, uh, you know, deciding whether this project is done or not. So you need to limit the work in process, as we said. Imposing a WIP limit is critical for implementing a Kanban. You cannot implement Kanban and just uh, shove it in, in, uh, with, with tasks and matters without knowing the backlog. Very, not, very, very important here to remember that you need, really need to clean your, uh, uh, your, your backlog. Okay, moving to other uh, interesting Things I like to use pictures a lot. So this is a an example of a simple Kanban. This is how you do it. You put your backlog, and again, this this backlog could be a, a group by project, by litigation, by matter, by contract, and then you set milestone. And these milestone uh, uh, they should be, of course, uh, tracked and visualized. And this is where you you say, okay, we're done. We completed this. We completed this. We completed this. And this is where everybody, right? It's, it's a beautiful feeling. We have 10 tasks to finalize this project. You see the 10 tasks are done, you, you, you close the project and everybody is happy, right? And you start the other, you start the other thing is basically the evaluation of, uh, did we do a good job or not? Uh, uh, so a few words on, 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 the, on the benefits of using a Kanban, daily meeting, keep legal project flexible, daily meeting, right? If you are working with a team of three lawyers, for example, on a, on a particular case, meet on a day-to-day -day basis for 15 minutes, for 30 minutes, before everyone starts doing whatever they are doing. Kanban allows the legal team to see the big picture. I have a typo here, sorry. Increase transparency to the whole project team. Everybody knows what's happening. Everybody knows how things are moving. Dear visibility. Easy to learn. It's a, it's a very it's a very easy tool. It's, it doesn't require a lot of you know technical background or even managerial background. You can grasp it immediately. 
And again, I'm, I, I'm repeating, and I'm for legal. We have a lot of law firms and in-house legal department who basically are using Kanban boards on a daily basis to archive matters, to see their matters and so on. Some, some we have law firms who have more than 3000 case and matters. Imagine how they will be, they will be visualizing this amount, this big amount of data. Okay, so an example here, I'm finished with this example and I'm done. Uh, in this example, we will try to illustrate the use of legal tech to create a Kanban for contracts and agreements, right? Contracts and agreements. So basically step number one is basically to configure, first of all, you go to Afro Legal uh, and you configure your dashboard or your Kanban, sorry. So what, by, by, by configuring uh, the, the Kanban board, I mean, what is, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, what are the steps, what are the processes? So this is step number one. In a, in a normal workflow of contract, this is step number one, step number two, and step number X, et cetera. And you, you choose the coloring, you choose the, you know, the title that you wanna appear in, in, in the screen. Step number two is basically to start putting your contracts, uploading your contracts, uh, uh, creating contracts from templates and so on and so forth. You start feeding the system with the data, with the data. And then whenever you're managing a contract, you just put the, status of this contract. For example, it's under negotiation, it's under filing and drafting, it's executed and so on so forth. So we need to, to put the status of this contract. And again, at the end of the day, you will have a, a very, uh, 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 an overview, an overview, like in one page, how to visualize your Kanban. What, what, what are the contracts under filing and drafting, under approval, negotiation, signature, execution, or, or the ones that are canceled as also. Well. So very important to visualize the campaign in one place. Very important to understand how to set up the, the workflow from the beginning, right? And it's very important to give the right permissions for the right people to visualize this campaign all, all along the, you know, the project and the, uh, 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 the project plan as it has been scoped by the project manager at the beginning of, uh, of the process. So by this, I reach, luckily, the end of my presentation. I'm not gonna take a lot of your time. I know how much lawyer really, uh, 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 their, their time is precious, but again, consider this webinar or this list of webinars that we are doing as, uh, I'm, I'm, we're using this just to, to uh, 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 to share with you some of the best practices of what we are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis with our clients. And we are very fortunate, really, very fortunate to have clients who are basically applying best practices. And we, we are seeing success stories everywhere, success stories, law firms increasing their profitabilities, in-house legal department increasing their efficiency. And we are happy to share with them these moments, these success, and uh, every time we, if you go to our website now, you, you're gonna find a lot of cases, success story, we call them success stories because they are really uh, uh, what makes the difference in, in an industry that is constantly changing and changing. And uh, uh, I, can, I can say it's gonna, it's, in, in the next three years, you, you'll, you, you, those who did not adopt, you know, uh, a legal tech, they will find themselves a, a little bit way off the, 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 the mainstream of the change. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm, and I'm open to any uh, uh, question uh, now, if you like. So uh, I'm gonna go to the Q&A session. Uh, uh, just feel free to ask any question. I'm gonna wait for a couple of minutes. Otherwise, uh, it has been a pleasure uh, uh, presenting to you this, this session. No problem. So thank you very much for attending the session today. Hoping to see you soon in a very interesting topic again. Uh, next time it's gonna be about how to create your dashboard, right? How to create your dashboard and how to basically follow up on your indicators. Uh, see you then, uh, have a beautiful day and bye-bye. Uh,